What's up guys, we are back with another Super 7 Ultimates review taking a look at a full wave of figures so I can get this stuff done before the end of the year. We've got a set of four TMNT Ultimates. We're taking a look at wave eight this time. We are, we're starting to get super deep with this line and I'm really excited uh, with where this line is going and I'm also pretty excited for the assortment in this wave. So we got again, four figures to talk about. We've got Genghis Frog, which may be the one I'm looking forward to the most because of just how ridiculous he looks. We've got one of my favorite variant turtles of all time, Space Cadet Raph. We've got Robo Rocksteady. He looks, he looks pretty gnarly. And then we've also got kind of the odd one out. We've got a Shredder again. This is a variant on Shredder that is, you know, very, very, very rare to say the least. He also gets a unique slip cover for some reason. The other ones have the normal ones, but he gets a metallic slip cover. So you've got the manhole cover, and then you've got the Turtles logo. So the good guys are green, the bad guys are purple. Of course, take that slip cover off, and then you've got your figure there in the window. We've still got that very, like, uh, you know, brick wall motif with all the graffiti figure in the window, and then the back of the package is going to give you more of that motif with all of the nastiness and the gunk of the city streets, and then you've got your bio for whatever figure is in that box. So, yeah, let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. So we're gonna start with Shredder for this particular wave because, well, I'm familiar with him. We can knock him out relatively quickly. He doesn't offer anything new outside of colors. This is a variant on the figure that we got in, what, wave two in Ultimates? And this is built upon a figure that did exist in some fashion in the Vintage line. It's not necessarily like a repaint Shredder just to have him in sort of cartoonish colors because that's not really what this is. It is, but it isn't. There is a Vintage figure that looks like this, but it is exceedingly rare to the point where you might expect it doesn't actually exist, but there are a couple of examples, at least one that I've seen a picture of uh, out there on the internet. So it is a Shredder with silver armor, and in this instance, he does have a little bit of a different color scheme because he's got darker purples. Uh, we've got this head with the uh, the blacked out eyes, things like that. So let's see what he can do, see how he moves around. Still the same figure, so if you've got him, you know. Head moves a little up and down. Got a little tilt, you've got rotation. Arms go out at the shoulders. They go out about this far before the shoulder pads start to get in the way. You've got swivel. Everything on this guy is pretty tight, but in a good way. You've got bicep swivel. We've got single jointed swiveling uh, elbows, so they can swivel a little bit. You've got hinges, rotation at the wrist, normal stuff there. Torso was always a pain point on this guy, very locked down. It's just a swivel. Uh, he has no real clearance to do anything else. Legs go out, they kick forward, they kick backward. You got your thigh twist. We've got single jointed knees. They go back almost 90, but not 90. You've got knee swivel. There's also a boot cut on this shredder. And then you've got hinges. Really good hinges, really good rocker on this guy as well. So he does have pretty decent articulation. Like there's definitely room for improvement on this particular body. I would love for him to be able to do something in terms of crunching or anything like that. But the range on the arms and the legs are pretty solid. Nothing truly getting in the way outside of just being single joints. Now, as far as the overall look and feel, there is and there isn't a lot to talk about with this shredder. I feel like this one really just comes down to do you like the silver armor? in addition to the blue. Like, do you need both? Maybe, maybe not. I do really like this color scheme because it does it does evoke the cartoon a little bit, but of course he still has the, the bare arms and the bare chest, which I will always, always love because it's just absurd. But there are some differences between this figure that aren't just the obvious. So we've got like deeper, darker purples on the on the undies, on the boots, on the cape, and on the wraps on the wrist. They're not the same color. Uh, the torso is actually a little bit different as well. The color seems to be slightly different, and that just may be, you know, the variances in manufacturing there, but they are not the same. The blacks are the same, and then of course you do have the differences, the major differences, are the silver for the armor. And that's really all this is. Do you need both? Maybe, maybe not. But it does look really good. I am happy with the way this turned out. I think the silver is really clean, really, really vibrant. There's a lot of metallic there. Uh, he does shine quite a bit. I'm not really sure what the deal is with the head sculpt on this one. There is another head that has the, the face exposed and it's not cast in shadow. I don't know the reasoning for that one because I don't believe that vintage figure looked like that. I think it was just the standard head sculpt. But I do like it. It does make him different enough 
to maybe warrant that purchase if you're kind of on the fence. The cape is still wired, and I really like this. It does have good posability. It gets up out of its own way. I mean, you can get it up and just sort of sit in there. No issues. It's not going to droop. It's not going to fall down on its own. It does hang. I mean, like this one, it's the same kind of cape, and I've had this one sort of in a janky kind of pose for at least a year sitting on a shelf. So uh, it's not gonna fall without you messing with it. But I do think there is maybe enough here to warrant that double dipping because this is different. It does pay tribute to that, that really, really rare, obscenely rare figure that you're certainly never getting your hands on. So if you were interested in getting something like this, this is your opportunity to maybe, you know, get something in that vein. It also gives you an opportunity if you don't have this shredder to jump on something like this one as well. So I do like the way he turned out. I like what's slightly different about him. You know, there are things that aren't just the obvious, those deeper purples and the slightly different torso are changed up enough so they don't look like just carbon copies of each other on the shelf with a slightly different set of armor. Now, as far as accessories goes, Shredder is fairly comparable to, well, the first Shredder that we got. Just most of his stuff has been changed up to match this color scheme. So to start with, we do get an extra head sculpt and this is more in line with the normal head sculpt and more in line with that vintage figure. So you get the silver helmet with the exposed face and the purple mouth guard. We also get a plastic cape if you want to use this uh, instead of, of the soft goods, although of course soft goods does make a little bit more sense for, for this kind of shredder. For that soft goods cape, I took this off uh, just for sake of talking about the figure. This is the soft goods belt. That's the elastic band with a little Velcro on the back. If you want to cinch that soft goods cape to his waist, you've got the option with that. And then we get some extra hands. We get a set of fists. You get a set of style posy, open palm hands. He's got uh, gripping hands on him in the box. You get a canister of mutagen. Uh, this came out kind of warped because it was super, super in that tray. Uh, I can fix it, but just something to note. Maybe watch pulling this out. And then you get a bunch of ninja weaponry. So we get two ninja stars. And this is all stuff that we've kind of already gotten before, just in different colors. You get the various and sundry ninja weapons that I can never remember the names to. The little pizza looking thing, whatever this thing is. I've seen these for 30 some years. You think I know what these are called by now. You get this and then we get two katanas as well. And all of them are done up in this new deeper purple color with the silver metallic. So stuff we've seen before really just changed up enough for this release. Now we're going to take a look at the punk frog in this wave, Genghis, and honestly, the punk frogs have never been high on my list of characters or figures that I really cared about. I like them, but they've never been a thing for me, really. However, when they first showed this wave, his insane look and the nastiness and the level of detail that they put on this figure definitely had my interest. So uh, he was high on my list just to check out out of curiosity's sake. And quite honestly, I think we've got a really, really solid figure here. So let's see what he can do. Uh, his articulation is honestly probably some of the best for turtles thus far. So we've got a head that his head's jut jutting forward, but he's got this crazy, crazy range on this neck. So he can look up, he can look down. You've got tilt side to side. You've got rotation, of course. So all sorts of movement all over the place with a big old ball peg there. Arms out at the shoulders. They swivel. You've got single jointed swiveling elbows about 90 degrees. You've got hinges. You've got rotation at the wrist. Normal stuff there. You've got a waist twist down here, but you've also got a diaphragm cut. And this one actually kind of works. It's not perfect, but it kind of works. It's a weird looking cut because of the shirt being part of the upper torso. But he does go backwards and forwards a little bit, tilt side to side. It's also a swivel point. So it does work decently enough. Legs go out all the way. They kick forward. They kick backward. You do have a thigh twist up there. You've got single jointed 90 degree swiveling knees. And then we've got hinges, really good hinges, and really good, like you can't get much better than that, really good rockers down there also. So he moves really well. Again, uh, he might be one of the better examples of articulation for Turtles Ultimates, and also everything on him, you've probably heard it, is pretty tight, but not in a negative way. I've not had any need to heat this guy up. He has moved very tightly, but very smoothly right out of the box. Now, the visuals on Genghis are what I was really interested in. His articulation is surprisingly good, like so much better than I expected it was going to be. But the visuals are where it's at, especially for this line, because it has nostalgic ties to the vintage toys for me. And they have just made him the nastiest looking thing. He's such a weird looking, very drugged out 
frog. Like, this guy looks like he's on something. He is tripping on acid or something. That's probably what it is. That's got to be the inspiration here. He very much looks like he is... Uh, in a different place and time, honestly, a lot of it, a lot of it comes down to the eyes. Uh, the alt head really shows that up. Uh, but I really like what they did here. The sculpt on him is absolutely tremendous. The shirt looks really good. All of the little bubbles and boils and all kinds of nastiness all over his skin looks so fantastic, and he is absolutely covered from head to toe in a wash. It's just a wash. Like it doesn't look like you know anything really purposeful. But that dark green over top of the light green absolutely makes him pop. It really brings out all of that nasty, scaly detail because it's not just those little bubbles that are all over his body. He does have a lot of scaly texture on top of that. And he's also just got a really weird design. So he's got this, you know, like Tommy Bahama kind of shirt going on with the yellow and the blue. You've got the bracelet. You've got the watch. You've got the little, you know, uh, ankle bracelet down here. He's got his belt with all the little grenades. These are not removable, which, you know, your mileage may vary on whether that matters or not. I prefer it, honestly, because I always lose stuff like that. So it's kind of a quality of life thing for me personally. I don't want to have to worry about those. He's got his trunks and everything about him is just nicely done. I even like the gold necklace, the chains up here, which are free floating. So they aren't part of the sculpt. They're a separate piece that sits around the neck. He's chunky, he's beefy, he's got a really good feel to him. Again, I love, I love this expression. I love it. It looks so good. This crazy looking smile with these glossed over eyeballs. They just really do it for me in like a nasty, goofy way that only comes with vintage turtle figures. So this guy looks amazing from top to bottom. He is still just a frog wearing clothes, so he doesn't have some of the more ridiculous designs, but he's just so weird looking at face value that it's hard to not just sort of get sucked in on this one. I think they did just a tremendous job. This may easily be one of the best Turtles Ultimates yet, honestly, which is insane for me to say because, I, again, I don't really care about the frogs, but they really just killed it on him. Now for accessories, this frog has just some wild stuff. It's not necessarily the most wide-reaching array of accessories, but it's all about what it is. Like, the stuff is more important than how many pieces he comes with with this one. So to start with, we do get an extra head sculpt, and this, this might be one of my favorite alt heads in the turtle line period because it's just so nasty and so ridiculous. So this is, of course, him. Mouth fully open, tongue going crazy. He's got this very off-putting set of human-style teeth. Like, those look just like something that came out of a human, and, uh... It's, it's kind of uncanny valley in that way for me. The tongue is really crazy. He's still got, you know, those glossed over eyes and all of the nastiness all over the face. He just still looks like he's very much on something. So I'm, I'm really, really happy with that. We get some extra hands. Uh, he's got some really wide gripping hands on him in the box. You get a set of more tightly closed gripping hands. Uh, they, they work for different accessories. And then you get a set of fists. We get his sunglasses. And these are a little bit difficult to utilize, kind of how um, the Surfer Mikey was also kind of difficult because they don't really have any place to go since he doesn't have ears or anything like that, but you can get them on there and then they sit just fine. You know, that's, that's a classic thing for him. We do get the Boogie Board Shield. My only real gripe with this is that I think it's kind of oversized. Well, I don't think it is oversized. It's really huge. This thing is absolutely massive. I wish it was a slight bit smaller, maybe like 10, 15% smaller. It does have the little uh, band to put around. Likely his, his wrist is what I would put it on. I don't want this dangling around and it doesn't make sense to put it on his foot. But this looks really good. I mean, it's very much like the vintage thing. I just wish it was a slight bit smaller. And then we do get his uh, tongue gun here. And this thing is crazy. It actually does move in and out like this, which is just... I don't know, kind of off-putting. And this is one of those things that's going to work better with one of the different, like the more wide gripping hands. And then the tighter gripping hand works a little bit better on the shield. But it's got this just insanely large, like this is kind of gross, just in every possible way. This big nasty tongue gun. It's kind of heavy, so you might want to have it pulled back a little bit. And it sits like this. But this is, this is a weird, very nasty turtles style weapon so i'm really happy with this thing i think it looks pretty cool fully fully realized in a much larger scale so like i said he doesn't come with like an, an insane array of accessories he has quite a bit of stuff but it's all about what it is like this is all very much important accessories for Genghis that has been changed up for the Ultimates line, but it's it's really all about this head sculpt. It's, it's tremendous. It's nasty looking. It's very befitting of this insanely nasty looking frog that they've cooked up. Moving right along, we have maybe the most visually striking figure in this wave, and that, of course, 
even beyond Genghis, which I think is one of the craziest looking figures in this line, Robot Rocksteady is easily one of the coolest looking figures in this line, I think, and maybe one of the better examples of Ultimates. Again, just like Genghis, this guy has a lot going for him that shows the progression of this line. He does have some drawbacks in terms of articulation, but he's very similar to the actual Rocksteady in that regard, and Bebop as well. So we've got a head that can look up a little bit, he can look down. You've got slight tilt, you've got rotation, you've got these cannons on his back that are going to sort of, you know, they're going to bump into each other, but they swivel also. Arms go out pretty much all the way at the shoulder, they rotate, you've got a bicep swivel, we've got a single jointed swiveling elbow, you've got swivel and hinge at the wrist. My wrists are super, super tight on this guy though, so watch out for yours. You've got a waist twist, and that's all he's got, which again is pretty much what I'm talking about when, when it comes to Rocksteady and Bebop. That's basically all they did as well. I wish he had the, the ability to crunch, and I'm always going to say that when a figure doesn't have it. I don't know that I'm truly, truly missing it compared to everything else this figure is, you know, giving me, but he doesn't have it. Legs go out all the way. They kick forward a good bit. You kind of cock them out to the side to get a go a little bit further because some of the way this is cut in. Backwards, you've got a thigh twist. Single jointed, 90-ish degree knee. And then you've got hinges, pretty good hinge. They hinge forward better than they hinge backward and very limited rocker on this guy just because of how things are uh, cut in there. He doesn't really have a lot of range. There's a little bit, but not much. So he's very similar. Again, he's very similar again to Bebop and Rocksteady. He's big and bulky. Generally speaking, pretty solid range on those joints. The only thing that I'm truly missing is any kind of crunch, which again, goes in line with the other two anyway. Now, visually, this is where I think the figure is going to get the most attention because of the striking nature of his colors. I did not have this vintage toy. I never had it. I've only seen it a couple times. Like it's it's one of the it's more rare than others. It's not super rare, but it's you know getting towards the end of the line. So this one is one I'm I'm excited to have just to have representation of this one. I've always thought the robot Bebop and Rocksteady were really cool ideas. Just changing them up to give me something different was fun. And this guy is is definitely an instance of Super 7, at least from my perspective, taking things from, you know, past figures and improving upon them and showing kind of where the line can go. Because there's so much paint on this figure, the, the metallic on him is very good. Like, it very much is reminiscent of another figure that I've taken a look at recently with the uh, Toho Mechagodzilla. Like, he's covered in metallic. We've got, uh, you know, translucent parts up on the head things like that to give you, you know, an ability to do any kind of light piping or any of that kind of stuff. And then just the size and the bulk on this figure is one of the major things that I really liked about Bebop and Rocksteady to begin with. I know some folks didn't really want them to be overly massive and huge, but I thought it was just the coolest damn idea that they could be so much bigger and that much more of a threat to the turtles. So it makes more sense to me that the robot version is just as big and bulky, and he has a great shelf presence. The sculpt is, of course, 100% unique on this guy. There's all sorts of bits and bobs and greebling detail, even all over the back. Tons of little things all over him to pop and catch the light. And, I mean, he's definitely going to light up when you get him under some lights. He's got decent paint on him overall. I mean, I don't have any issues with it. He's got purple accents. You've got the orangey-red accents. You've got black. And it's just a really cool design that translates a very familiar-looking character. I mean, it's obviously Rocksteady but it translates him into this very angled and you know hard point edged kind of rhino robot, which I think looks really cool. I like the, the turrets on the back. There's a lot of paint on those as well. I mean, blacks and oranges and silvers. And then you've got your head sculpt up here, which is probably the most, I don't know, the most eye catching piece of them because it's such a big noggin, but you've got like the purple horns, you've got the, uh, the transparent dome up top, which leads to the eyes. So if you, know, if you get a light in there, uh, really good. You'll you'll get some shine through those eyes, and it's just a really cool profile. Like he's he's very angular. He's very boxy in nature, so it looks kind of like you know like a robot that you would have seen in a cartoon as a kid. Very very boxy kind of design, uh, but it translates Rocksteady's look and feel into a robot really well. And I think I mean I, I don't have any faults with this one. I don't think Super Seven did a really solid job. It's going to be tough picking between this one and Genghis for me, I think, when it comes to my favorite in this wave, because both of them do what they're setting out to do very well. They're just very different kind of figures. And this is a really awesome look and feel for Rocksteady. And I, I mean, I really would love to have Bebop alongside him just to complete the pair. Now, as far as accessories goes, Robot Rocksteady has a pretty solid spread. It's not too little and it's not so much that I don't know what I'm going to do with it all. 
and it all basically plays up the idea of him being, well, a robot. So to start with, we do get some extra hands. There, are, there is no extra head for this one. You've got fists, we've got a set of gripping hands, and then you've also got a set of splayed finger style posy kind of hands. But his weapons are also hands. So you've got one right here that is like this sort of crazy chainsaw blade, which I absolutely love. And then we also get this one, which is like an energy sword. So you could have him using both at the same time on either hand or mix and match. And this, of course, is like a translucent orange. So I really like that. We also get some energy effects, which is something I kind of harp about with ultimates a lot because we don't get enough of them, I don't think. So you get two of these little blast effects right here for the shoulder cannon. So you get one for each side and they just pop right in. I really like those. And then you also get another blaster that will fit over top of this piece on his on his wrist here. Like it just sits over top and then you've got a third uh, blaster that can be on his on his body at any given time. So he's got a bunch of different weapons and then he also gets his signature shield as well, which is the big uh, translute, fuck. And then he also gets his signature shield, which is the big purple translucent shield. Of course, you know, another vintage callback. And this works really well with his color scheme also, I feel, since it plays up those small purple accents on the figure itself. Big old translucent piece. But he does have, like, a really good spread here. It's not tons and tons. Like, he certainly doesn't have the most compared to any other figure in this wave. But it's all really good. I could see myself using, essentially, everything here. And then we round out the wave with our turtle. So we've got... Space Cadet Raph here, one of my favorites of the variant turtles. I mean, it's one of the early ones, so it's the one that sort of, that set that sticks with me. And I'm really happy that we're getting these. I've said that a number of times. I'm really happy that they have been trying to knock out these variants because they do hold a lot of nostalgia for folks like myself who grew up with this line. So let's see what he can do. See how he moves around. He is pretty damn limited, actually. And I don't, I don't know if I'm too hung up on that or not. Like, it's definitely a negative when it comes to trying to pose him. But when you think about the fact that he's in a spacesuit, maybe he shouldn't be super articulated. I, I don't know. I'm going to take the dome off just so we can do the, the head. The head is actually probably the best area on this figure. He's got some crazy range, actually. So he can look up. I mean, that's as far as possible. He can look down pretty good. You've got tilt side to side. You've got full rotation, all that good stuff. The arms only go out about this far. They do swivel, but that's about it. You've got a bicep swivel there. We've got single jointed elbows, but they are super, super, super limited. Like they only go out. I don't even know what, what you would consider that. 45 degrees, maybe. You've got hinges. You've got rotation at the wrist. There is nothing at the waist on this guy. As you can see, he is a single piece there. Uh, if there's something inside this that I can't really see, like how the hip piece is connected, I don't know how this is all put together inside, uh, but there does not seem to be any shimmy there whatsoever. Legs go out all the way. Well, pretty much all the way. They kick forward, they kick backwards. You do have your thigh twist up there. Single jointed knees, still pretty limited. Uh, they do offer some rotation as well. And then you've got rocker and you've got hinges down at those ankles. So he is, I mean, he's more limited than the regular turtles. Obviously there, there's no doubt about that. And it's, there's no way to really sugarcoat it. He is pretty damn limited when it comes to moving him around. That said though, thinking about the fact that he's in this very big puffy suit, Maybe it makes sense, you know, from that perspective, but it is still going to be difficult to really put him into a lot of dynamic poses. Now, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, which I, I'm sure I do at this point, the visuals on this figure are definitely my main interest because, you know, again, this is a variant turtle. It's one of those early variant turtles that, for lack of a better way to say it, not to sound too overly dramatic about it, hold a really special place for me. I absolutely loved the variant turtles in the original line. Give me turtles in pretty much any damn situation, and I, I just wanted to have them. The original ones, though, are, are where it's at. So Samurai Leo, for example, is easily one of my favorite figures of all time. Space Cadet Raph is my favorite Raph aside from, like, say, the regular, the original, and the storage shell Raph. This, this is it for me. This is one of them. And I think Super 7 did a pretty good job of doing what Super 7 does with these when it comes to translating that overly detailed in many ways playmates figure into something bigger with even more detail and more paint on it and the paint is specifically what i want to talk about on this guy because he doesn't look like he has a lot but when you really get close there is a decent amount of paint on this figure and i'm not just talking about stuff like the yellows here or the silvers or these blues i'm talking about a very subtle wash across the entire figure that brings out some of the sculpt because he kind of looks like he's sort of like a dingy off-white 
but there is a subtle blue wash everywhere on this guy. Uh, it's on every inch of the the astronaut suit itself. So it brings out all of like the stitch work and the uh, like the seams. So things like the, the shell patterning back here really get brought out, uh, things like that. And I really like it. It helps to break him up a little bit because at first I wasn't sure how detailed he was going to be until I got him in hand and out of the box and realized there is a lot more variance in that color. Now, of course, he does have a lot of other great detail here as well. It's a Playmate style figure, so of course there's tons of sculpt all over him. He's got little bits and bobs and doodads, you know, little pouches and zippers and things like that. You've got the opening communicator here, which I think is awesome. There's a Fugitoid inside there, which is just rad. I love that. You got the canisters on the back with that metallic silver, some of these like black pieces for like gaskets and things like that to lock him in the suit. You've got this sort of armor piece up here. You've got little hose pieces that, that we'll talk about later when we get to accessories as well. And then the, probably one of the bigger focal points is this chest piece that is fully tampoed and just full of color. So it's definitely gonna break him up and add a, a kind of a focal point for this figure, especially with like things like the ooze gauge and things of that nature. Uh, there's just some weird stuff in there. You know, little gauges and bits and bobs that mean probably nothing, but they look cool on a figure, right? And he is, Limited when it comes to articulation, of course, but again, I think that the nature of this figure maybe sort of plays along with that. So I'm not too upset about it because I think he does look pretty damn tremendous as an astronaut. We got our head sculpt up here, which, you know, again, does have some awesome range on it. I love what they were able to do here, but he looks really good. That's, that's a classic Raphael kind of expression, fully gritted teeth, super angry for whatever reason. And then you've got your uh, slightly brighter red bandana that goes with the elbow and knee pad. So that's something that happens in the vintage line where that red is not necessarily consistent throughout. So this is another instance of giving us a different shade of red for Raph and his very signature green with that skull cap. Now he does have the, uh, the dome on him in the box. And this thing is really good. You know, the one thing that I remember from the vintage figure specifically is like, I have a handful of them. They, they would typically fog up over time. This thing is so, so super clear. It looks great on him. It's sized really well, and it does allow for his head to be kind of in a lot of different positions and still be on him just fine. It doesn't lock into place. It's very easy to take off. It sits in this sort of trench around the neck, but it doesn't like clasp in, so you're probably not gonna have any issues with it. I don't see any reason for, for any concern about it breaking or cracking through uh, overuse or anything like that. So he looks pretty fantastic. He does have limitations because of this design, but I think on top of that, the design is just incredibly well executed here. And then for Raph's accessories, he has, in general, just a really solid spread from start to stop. Very happy across the board. He's got a really cool alternate head sculpt here with like a, it's almost like an aviation style of helmet, of mask, if you want to call it that. So it's very turtly in sculpt and in shape. Nice paints, really good details. You got the tubing, all that silver metallic, the blacked out visor, all that kind of stuff. The, uh, the dome piece does work with this as well. So you can have him, you can have him using both if you want. We do get some extra hands. So he's got splayed finger hands on him in the box. You get a set of trigger finger hands. You get a set of fists and you also get a set of standard gripping hands. Now, one of the big things for this figure was the gun and the tube, and that is still in play here. So he has his, uh, he's got his silver gun, which has just a really futuristic kind of retro future style of design. And then you've got the tube that ports onto the back of the gun and then pegs into the torso. The tube is really good, works well. It seems to stay in place just fine. It's, it's not a bendy wire tube, but it's very flexible. As you can see, I've got it just fully wrapped around his arm right now, which is kind of odd, but it does work nicely. He does include uh, a lot of other very raft centric stuff as well. So you've got, of course, you've got some psi, and these are really cool because they're energy weapons. So you've got this metallic handle and then you've got this translucent red for the blades. He's got the very spacey sword that came with the vintage figure and it's backwards. So you've got a metallic blade and then you've got an energy handle with more of that translucent. He's got this piece for his alternate head. Well, not the alternate head, the, the one that's on him in the box. So this is like an energy visor. It doesn't really fit on either head all that great, honestly, but it doesn't fit on this thing at all that I can tell. So it seems to fit most specifically on the standard head that he comes with. So it'll give him more of like a tactical energy type of readout display kind of thing wrapped around his head. He's got a piece of pizza, but this is really neat. So it's like astronaut pizza. So it's coming in like a foil pouch of some kind. It's got, it's got the metallic silver. It's got a zipper all over it that wraps around. The design on this, like honestly, is, is pretty great. I really like this for something that's so inconsequential. 
and then it's got the pizza sort of stuff tampoed on there. And then lastly, one of the cooler things that they did, and this is something that goes back to something I will say anytime it occurs with turtles, is he comes with a buddy. So this guy is not part of the vintage figure in the sense that he came as a pack-in buddy. This thing was wrapped around the back of, of Raph in the sculpt. This was part of the figure, just sort of cinched on the back of the, of the figure, like right around this area right here. So instead of doing that, they decided to change it up and give us this little alien guy as a buddy which I'm always down for. I love the buddies when it comes to turtles. His head can move, uh, that's about it. But it's a neat little guy that will definitely beef up your display. And if you're like me, you're never gonna turn down a turtle buddy. So Raph comes with a really, really solid spread just from start to stop. I love the extra head sculpt and all of the, the upgrades to the vintage accessories work really, really well in this format. So overall, this is a damn good wave of turtles. I'm really happy with the way this one turned out. I feel like I feel like we're maybe back on track a little bit with this one. Everything seems to be going in the right direction. Rocksteady is awesome. Space Cadet Raph is fantastic. Genghis Frog is just a huge surprise, especially for me, because I'm not the biggest fan of the punk frogs. The only outlier on this wave is, of course, that Shredder figure, but I still like that Shredder. This just happens to be a repaint paying homage to a very obscure and rare variant figure, which is also kind of fun in its own way. The other three figures are undoubtedly the stars of this wave, and they all excel in their own ways. And of course, we get a tremendous array of accessories across the board on all three of these figures and Shredder as well. So I'm really happy with the way this one turned out. I'm really looking forward to getting back into the swing of getting more and more turtles from Super 7. So that's going to do it for this look at the Super 7 Ultimates TMNT Wave 8. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.